first three minutes of fishing. Up. The first snook landed of the day. Hey, this is Luke and have a fun report for you today. This is a really good case study on how important knowing real-time feeding zone trends are. You know, knowing the types of spots to look for to find the, the feeding fish, to find the feeding zones. Because once you know that, it basically trumps everything else, to be honest. We've done a lot of lessons and, and, uh, and even webinars on using online maps to find good spots. And, and yes, that is absolutely you know, very important to know. But if you don't know the, the trends, if you don't know what types of spots to look for based on, on real time, on, on recent knowledge, um, you just, you're just not gonna, it's gonna be a guessing game, right? And, but once you know the right type of spot, most importantly, is that you can apply that knowledge to find thousands of good spots with or without maps. And so this day in particular, and the reason I'm showing this is this is literally the first, the first cast to the first catch. It's coming up pretty soon. So the two rules I gave myself this day was number one is that I could not make a single cast in any spot that I've ever fished before. So this was a 100% exploration fishing trip. And then number two is that I, I would actually just drive around. I had no predefined spots to go to. I would literally just drive around until I came across the, the type of spot that has been reported consistently in the Insider Fishing Club. And that has been, you know, to target the, the shorelines of the major bays, you know, fairly close to the passes and inlets, but specifically on the windblown parts of them that has good structure and bait fish. And so seeing all these birds in the background, that was a clear sign that this was gonna be a good spot. All the other spots that I found that were, that fit the mold worked just as well. It ended up being a very fun trip. And Otis actually had a once in a lifetime chance to catch his first ever fish. So this is a fun video. Here's the first redfish. First three minutes of fishing. I'll see the timer on the GoPro. Pretty cool. Find those birds. Usually find some predators. All right, I went ahead and got my, my uh, mic hooked up. So let's see what else we can catch. Yeah, so I'll fast forward this cast, but cast number two, right? So just two casts after that redfish, I had some more action and again, in a spot I'd never been to before and I just focused on the trends. Oh, there we are, got him. <laughs> that was just two casts later, that was a snook. Yeah, find these feeding birds and you will almost always find feeding predators. I mean, that's probably five casts in. Now I caught a redfish and that was, that was definitely a snook. Not a huge one, but a solid one. Oh, there. Oh. All right, I'm gonna stop right here. Put the uh, power pull down. I just literally just had one when I was sitting. So I fan casted that area for a while, had multiple more strikes, but I think they're just smaller fish. I didn't get a hook in any of them. So I picked up and kept moving down. And then here's what happened. Ooh, there we are, got him. Nice fish. This is either a big trout or a, I think it's a snook. Yep, snook. So first snook landed of the day. Not a giant, but fun size. Came up and smacked the uh, the paddle tail. Let this guy go real quick. All right, there he is. Yeah, so I fished that area a little bit longer and uh, Otis was getting antsy. So I, I ended up pulling up to this little island. I uh, just let him burn off some energy and then went back to exploration fishing and went to a new spot. Again, I've never been here before and I was working this shoreline. So there's a, a point here and it was kind of deep where I was. So I was working the paddle tail all the way back, still throwing the same lure. I didn't ever change. And some really funny footage coming up because I, I, I hooked this trout on my first cast there at this spot. It was a small one, but as I was pulling it up, I was trying to get it up over Otis and the hook came out and Otis had his chance on catching his first fish ever. Does he catch it or does he drop it? Yeah, Otis totally fumbled uh, the trout catch, but the, the trout was was okay. The, the, there are no teeth marks, and it swam off strong. And so what I what I was doing, I just I just really kept fishing down that shoreline again, just exploring some new territory. That's just always fun, and uh, and realized that these fish were holding really close to the trees. So, so I was targeting those little coves where you just saw that arrow. That's a little. It's a minor cove that's next to a minor point. And what I was doing, I was just taking the paddle tail uh, across as many of those points as possible. 
And uh, in this case, I was punching straight into them. And, uh, and those, those, those snook and, and redfish, they were, they were holding close to the trees in most cases. And so here's the next one that I got a hook into. That was a, that was a snook that, uh, that got off next to the boat. So here's a cool instance over to my, to my left. As soon as I hook up, there's a big swirl. I don't know what that was, but that was something really big. I'm not sure if it was a turtle or maybe it could have just been a, a grandmama snook, a giant one, but that was a big fish. So anyhow, that was a red. And so the same exact, the same exact thing was working for snook and redfish. Uh, here's the, the next, uh, the next hookup. And again, here's a little bit more of a, of an aggressive point. And so I cast it over it, worked the paddle tail across. And, uh, that's when I got the hookup again, another snook. And so I just kept fishing down the shoreline. This was maybe another 50 yards further. And, uh, and again, in most cases they were hitting really close to the trees, but it's always smart to work your bait all the way back. And uh, because in this case, I caught, this is actually the biggest fish of the day that hit close to the boat. I got a hook set in there and I could, I could feel that it was heavier than the others. And so I was trying to get a look at it. It was kind of coming straight to the boat. It turned out to be a solid redfish. And the best news, it was only 1125 at this point. My first cast was at eight. And so this was just a little bit over three hours of fishing, had a ton of fun. Again, all of which were, were done. All, all these fish were caught in an area that I've never once casted a lure before. And so it's, this is just, a, again, proof, uh, just a, really an illustration, a case study on how effective just simply knowing the trends can be and, and then applying them and, uh, and, and not doing anything fancy. All I did is I just applied the real-time trends that were being discussed in the insider community, and I just used a lure that I trust. I was just using this 4-inch Slam Shady paddle tail the entire time rigged on a 3 16 ounce jig head. I didn't ever bother about worrying that it wasn't going to work or, or worrying about changing the lure. I just stuck with it and focused on finding some cool spots. And in case you're not yet familiar with the insider community that I was talking about, here, here it is. And this is this is just part of our insider fishing club. And this, this part in particular is basically like a Facebook group on steroids. So it's just like a Facebook group. You can easily ask questions, get, get answers, but get really good answers in this case. And, and also you can post reports, but more importantly is everything is categorized and, and filterable. So reports can be filtered by city, by region, by state. And then the Q&A stuff can be, you know, it's all, it's all categorized by topics. You can see some categorizations here. And then if you click on any of these links, you can uh, see more details. For instance, this, uh, this report, you know, all, you know, Hatteras has its own feed. So does North Carolina. So does Redfish. So all of this stuff is just easily filterable. So you can really dial in to whatever you're interested in really quickly. And so here's an example of one of the reports. And this is just, again, how powerful this platform is. We, we now have about 10,000 members. And these reports alone, we're getting about 30 a day and it's growing quickly. And so again, just helpful information, uh, get some cool pics. And then more importantly, let me scroll down below. And I'll have to cut this because this individual does show the spot. And so this again is private only. So I'm not gonna show this on YouTube. All right, so here's down below the map. So again, this person did show exactly where they were. Nowhere else will you see, you know, such such helpful information. But but as far as the, the trends and tactics, you know, when I mentioned the real-time trends, this is the section that, that members use to just to share what's working. And this is the sort of information that is invaluable, right? This is way more important than knowing a specific spot. It's much more valuable to know the type of spot to look for. And in case you're wondering if this is for you, you know, here's the master map that, that shows geographically where all of the reports have been posted. Obviously, Florida has the most. You know, this is where it started, but it's grown, you know, grown over to Texas along the Gulf all the way up the Atlantic. So as long as you're in this region and you like to target redfish, sea trout, flounder, and snook, and obviously tarpon and, you know, cobia, triple tail as a seasonal basis, you know, you're going to love this club. To learn more, I'll put a link down below. Otherwise, just thank you so much for your time and watching this video. Hope to see you again soon.